Hello? All right, how are you? Kevin Follin and Wendy Maxwell here. This is Hilltop's first ever webinar. Really excited to host it today. Oh, we just got joined by Heather. Hi, Heather, how are you? Our wonderful admissions director. So I know that we've got six folks registered today. Thank you so much for doing that. A healthy mix of some Hilltop parents and then also some folks who are new to Hilltop. And certainly the information that Wendy and I are that we're gonna be sharing today is not exclusive to finding success at Hilltop. We believe that these are practical tips to help anyone be successful across grade level. Anything you'd like to add while we wait for some of our audience to join us? No, I think what you just said, I think these are great tips and can be shared by anybody anywhere. So, and it would work you know, for any student, any grade level. It could be from a three-year-old, really up through middle school, even some tips for good for high school, just general tips that will help everybody. Excellent. Throughout the course of the presentation, there is a chat button on your screen. So even though Wendy and I will not respond immediately to the question, we will catalog them, and then at the end, uh, we will we'll go through them. So please don't be shy to participate. Being new to Hilltop, I think any of my, my new students can share that I, I love interactive meetings. I don't want to just hear myself talk. So I think, I think the best conversations are, are when, it's, when it's a nice, healthy back and forth. So we'll just wait maybe another two or three minutes for some more folks to sign in, and then we will get going. So how are you today? I'm actually having a pretty good day. Busy with students. Using some of the points we'll be talking about today. Absolutely. So. Now any of the points that, that you're talking about today, do you use that with your own kids? Uh, just no. with some of your students? Actually, no, I do. I have three children at home, and I do, do use these tips with them as well. And now they're all going into, they're all in high school. And I have a freshman, a sophomore, and a junior, and they've been using these techniques since, I would say, most of them since preschool because they do, there's different ways you can use these techniques with different age groups. Yeah, I believe that the best educational practices transcend grade level. So what can really be helpful for a senior in high school can also be helpful for a kindergartner or, or first grader. Mm -hmm. And you're, you, you're learning to use the skills at a younger age, which will benefit you when, as you get older. I think we should get started. All right, let's get going. So we're gonna switch our video off. We've got a somewhat basic slide presentation for you guys. Heather's just helping us with some of the tech background. Yep, thank you, Heather. All right, so hopefully you guys can see our screen. Hilltop Country Day School, tips for a successful school year. So again, my name is Kevin Folan. I am the brand new head of school here. I just started back in July, just moved from the beautiful state of Maine with my family, and it has been just an unbelievable transition. I'm the proud parent of three kids who currently attend Hilltop, a uh, first grader, a kindergartner, and a preschooler. And my wife and I feel very fortunate to have found this incredible school. Uh, my name is Wendy Maxwell. I am the Learning Center Director at Hilltop Country Day School, and I have been working at this school for the last 16 years, and I have three children who 
opposite of Kevin, my three are just graduated. <laughs> so I am now an alumni parent of three children who have attended the school since they were two and a half and now they are in high school. And I've always loved the school and I think everything that we've done here really follows them to high school. They had a real foundation that really works for them and they're doing well and they're excited where they are. So I'm very happy about that. Awesome. And Wendy's our Learning Center Director. Now, Wendy, on your list of credentials, it says that you are Orton Gillingham certified. For those of us who are tuning in, uh, what the heck does that mean? Okay. Um, Orton Gillingham is a uh, language-based program, and it uses multisensory sensory techniques. And what it does is it triggers all pathways to the brain that, is, that we're utilizing it at the same time. And the techniques are really for children who are having difficulty breaking the code of reading. So children who really have a language-based difficulties with maybe dyslexia, some auditory processing, maybe even some ADD, really benefit from this type of technique because it's really going through the basics and then it gets more complex. But you're always going back to what you've learned. So you're not tricking any students. You're not assessing them on anything that they don't know so they get anxieties. You're going back to everything that you've learned that you're teaching them during that time with this program. So it's a good program and it, it really works and it benefits those students really well. Excellent. And I know that you just uh, completed the advanced training through NJAIS, mm. the accrediting body for the New Jersey private schools. Yeah, so it's great. So I have the comprehensive level, which is phonemic awareness. And now I have the advanced level, which goes into uh, Greek roots, Latin roots, which really takes you a long way to break the language and to learn different ways of learning vocabulary, learning higher you know, higher learning words, higher sight words, and breaking down words and really understanding our language. So, excellent. really lucky. And, and I know that at Hilltop, we serve a variety of learners. We are not an exclusively learning disability school, uh, yet some of our best students uh, learn in different unique ways. And, and Wendy works both with our students and with our faculty to make sure that all of our students find success inside and outside the classroom. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't put a short plug in there for Hilltop Country Day School. Again, we are a preschool through grade eight independent school. We are the only independent school in Sussex County. We, you know, our, our curriculum is really predicated upon the importance of a project-based learning model, where we believe that it's important to teach our kids a skill and then to design a project where they can immediately apply that skill and they can understand immediately what is the real world implication you know mr rumstead our upper school science teacher he is masterful at teaching our science students a certain concept and then designing a project to help them understand it when they're learning about engineering they learn about that and then they will construct a bridge really encourage you to explore our website and to learn a little bit more about our dynamic school you know, I love this quote in our opening school meeting. One of the quotes that I talked about was, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. All of our students here at Hilltop, and I encourage you to talk about this with your students, talent will only take you so far. We believe in hard work, um, putting forth your best effort on a daily basis. Okay, so our first tip so encourage your child to take a risk we believe this and we see this every single day here at hilltop um, in talking to, to my students over the years one of one of the early red flags i will hear is oh mr Folan, i really want to focus on my academics this year so i'm not going to fill in the blank i'm not going to play lacrosse i'm not going to do the speech and debate team i'm not going to play my musical instrument Anytime I hear that, that's a really, really bad sign because we believe that you're really engaging across the curriculum, doing things both that your kid loves to do that they've done for years, but also trying some new things is a really, really great way to expand their horizons and, and to bring balance and stability into their lives. So I really encourage you with your students, ask them to try something different. And I would also challenge you guys as parents. Are you guys taking risks? Where are you guys trying to expand some of your own horizons? I know that it's so important for me, any sort of behavior that I wanna see in my daughter or my sons, I need to figure out a way to model that too. Wendy, anything you'd like to add on this topic? 
Yeah, no, I think that's really important. There are so many things that you just want to make sure that they challenge themselves to or experience because it's a different, I think it makes a well-rounded person that if you have different experiences out there, whether it's sports or arts or there's so many challenges and so many activities out there that, you know, go see what's out there until you find what really helps your child or what your child's really interested in, but get them involved because that also helps with the learning process. Absolutely. And I think the ultimate takeaway from school, it's not just about classroom education. It's about developing self-confidence. It's about learning about yourself um, and ultimately setting our kids up for success in the long run. Okay. Encourage your child to read. Basically, just what it says. This is really important and it really helps your child in the classroom, out of the classroom. You really want to get a child excited to read. Reading words is everywhere. So we encourage you to read aloud. Yeah, I mean, we all read aloud to our younger students, to our younger, younger children that, you know, you think you're going to, you know, reading them their goodnight story. But older children, too, it's fun to add family time, just all read together. Maybe somebody picks this book out and you're all just reading a really good story. Also, if you're traveling long distance, I really encourage audiobooks. Audiobooks, everyone's listening to the story, getting involved in it. And let's not forget, audiobooks are really good for students who, have, who are having trouble reading. There's nothing wrong with listening to an, a story on audio, and you could read along with the story. Uh, you're still doing comprehension, and it really develops your reading skills because you're seeing what's in print. Uh, make sure in your house, you should have plenty of different reading materials available that your child is capable of learning. You know, just put it around. Maybe there's a National Geographic magazine that is on this child's level and they're really interested in animals or science. You know, you can find these materials on their grade, grade levels, magazines, newspapers, graphic novels, things that they're interested in and also things that you want to make sure that they're capable of reading on their own so they could just pick it up and read it. And talk to your children when they're reading a story. Discuss it. Ask them questions. All this is good comprehension techniques and really helps your child out. What's happening in the story? What do you think about that character? And I just think really encourage your children to reading is really positive for them. Excellent. And I know that at Hilltop, we believe in practicing what we preach. We want our students to be great readers and we want them to, to love to read. This summer, we had a great summer reading program and we thought that it was really important that as, as the faculty and staff here that, that we needed to model that. And so we actually read Go Set a Watchman uh, Harper Lee's latest novel, a bit controversial. I, I highly recommend it if you're, if you're looking for a good read. And during our faculty and service days, we discussed it as a group. And we also thought that it was really important for us to share with our students that we were doing that. So kind of like the slide before, we believe that if, we want, if you want your kids to be great readers, uh, you need to model that behavior. To encourage responsibility, independence, and organization. I think one of the biggest questions that we need to ask ourselves as parents is, should I be doing this for my son or daughter? Now, of course, one of the things Wendy and I were talking about before was, you know, best practices transcend grade level. Of course, there's going to be a difference for the way that I parent my three-year-old versus the way that I parent my six-year-old. But I think ultimately we are trying to create um, independent students. And if we're doing everything for them, um, then we're going to rob them of some really important opportunities where, where they can learn. And in doing that, sometimes they're going to forget something. They're going to make a mistake. Um, and that's okay. I think that's also an opportunity for us to model. How do we handle a setback? How do we handle a mistake? I think that's how we can help develop um, persistent, resilient uh, young men and women. I think sending your child into school prepared each day is really, really important. Uh, help them get ready in the morning. I think for different kids, I and mean, I think depending on your morning routine, should you pick out clothes the night before? Should you pack lunch the night before? Is that something that you can do the morning of? I know that some families love checkoff lists. I know that in the Fallen household, we have a chalkboard so that we can kind of monitor what's going on each day, and then we will review that as a family. Scheduling, planning, to-do lists, very, very important so that we're all on the same page. Um, and then I think also helping your student, um, do they have a planner? Again, I think if we want to create responsible, independent learners, 
we need to um, enable them to do that. Um, I just want to add in. I also think it's really important that we say about the trans, you know, keep it goes on all aspects. You should also include extracurricular activities. They're going to have to learn how to, you know, get their lacrosse bag together. Do they have all the equipment they need? So that's why we're saying it just isn't just setting you up for a school day. It's setting you up for the whole long run. And I know that one of the, the buzzwords or buzz terms in education these days is, is executive functioning skills, mm -hmm. right? The ability to organize your day, organize your lives. And I know that you're an expert in that, Wendy. And that's something that we teach to all of our students, not just students with, you know, kind of um, diagnosed executive functioning deficits. Okay. Homework is always a question that every parent asks about. <laughs> Like, what do we do? What if they're getting mistakes? Um, what you can do for a child to, when it comes to homework to really help them out is, first of all, consistency is good and is key. You do want to like try to get them on a routine. Maybe, you know what, at four o'clock they're coming home from school, you want to give them a snack, but you want to say, you know what, let's do our homework now, so then you have time to you know, do your video games, go talk to your friends, you know, go outside and play. So we also know that, you know what, Sometimes you might have a soccer game or you may have gymnastics class. So just as consistent as you can be will help them out. Even if there's a day that you have to break away from that, as long as the most, as consistent as can be really helps your child out. Also, a homework area is really important and everyone has a different area that they want to do homework and some kids, you know, have a different comfort level. Maybe one of your children want to be at the kitchen table. Maybe someone has a desk in their bedroom. That's okay, but consistency and routine really helps and keeping like supplies and resources nearby when i say that instead of a child having to dive into the backpack and taking out their pencil case have it there for them have like a spot they know you know what here's my bin this is where we have the pencils there's rulers in there there's pens in there there's anything that you think they may need even glue sticks maybe some students need scissors and glue sticks but if you have it there available for them they don't have to start going into their backpack and it becomes a whole organization issue so that really helps with your children to get ready for homework. And you can offer guidance, answer questions they may have, and review their completed work. That's all okay, because then in the long run, you're gonna see if you're, you need to talk to the teacher. Maybe they are having difficulty in an area they're doing their homework with. It's okay, encourage, encourage your child, let them know, you know what, just try your best, resist your urge that you wanna provide the correct answer for them, and contact the teacher and let them know where the struggles were. And I think all that would really help your child. I'd also encourage all of you parents to have a conversation both with the teacher and the school and figure out what, what is the homework philosophy. I know that students get bogged down sometimes and this is just busy work. At Hilltop, we try to make this very deliberate that this is, this is practice. You will have just learned a skill in class that day and we think that homework is an opportunity to practice that skill. If it's taking three, four, five hours to do homework, we want you to let us know that is not the purpose of homework. It's not just to occupy time. It really is to build skill and, and I think to, to fine tune skill. Get involved. And this is specifically directed at you parents. Obviously we want your kids to be involved, but we believe, again, and I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, in this whole notion of you know modeling for your kids. If you want your kid to be involved, you get involved. I know that some parents are a little bit reticent. Oh, I don't want to be that parent constantly nagging a teacher. And of course, we as teachers, we appreciate that. But we do want to build a bridge between the school and what goes on at home. We want feedback. Did you hear something great about what we did in class today? Did you hear something that maybe concerns you? So we want to know some of this feedback in real time so that we can either continue some of this great stuff or maybe change course so that we can better serve your son or daughter. I think specifically at Hilltop, you know, there, there's a lot of different volunteer opportunities for folks to become involved. I think supporting fundraisers, uh, joining your PTA, or here, you know, joining the Hilltop Parents Association, checking the website, attending school events, I know that at Hilltop, uh, we have back to school nights, we have STEAM nights, we have school speakers. We have a variety of opportunities for not just your students to learn, but also for you guys as parents to learn.
Okay, and of course you want to encourage good study habits, and you, and from that's when we go back to you know the younger you start them, the easier it's going to get for them to start realizing what works for them, and time management is key, and that's where a lot of students have difficulties with. Uh, that's where the planner comes into play. That's where to-do list comes into play. You don't want them to just be cramming the night before because you're not really processing all that information in, in one time. So if they have a big project to do, you know what, you can help them break it up. Say, you know what, hey, let me look at what you have, work with them. Oh, I see you have something due in two weeks. Why don't we, you know, let me see what you have. Let's break it up. How about, we'll put it on a calendar in four days. Let's get the introduction done. Maybe in five days, let's do the illustrations or let's go onto the website, see what you need to do. But if you help them break it up and they start learning that this helps them in the long run of not just cramming and not procrastinating, it really helps with projects and with studying if they have a test. Um, so really break down larger tasks into smaller manageable tasks. Study ahead of time, not just the night before. And if, your child, if you are studying with your child or you see your child studying, you really don't want them studying for more than 45 minutes at a time, sometimes less. I mean, I'm talking about an older child, but if it's a, even a third grader, you don't want to go over like 15 minutes because if you, you have to give them time to process that information. So if you just keep sit there and you're drilling them and drilling them and just till you think they, you know, got you, they have it, they're going to have it for that second with you. You have to let them have the time to process the information and breaks are important. Uh, so you don't advocate for the all night, all nighter? Cram session? I'm thinking the cram session is not really going to work. <laughs> It'll work for you that day when you're like, okay, here's the answer. But when you come back the next day, you're only going to remember about probably the last thing that you studied that night. The last word is like when you hear the last song on the radio and you come to school, that's, that's going to be the last thought, thought you're going to have in your head. So, and then figure it out. There's a lot of study cards. There's flashcards now on, on apps you can use and memory boosters. So you help your child figure out like what works best for them for studying. I think that's a great final point. I think it's really our job, especially with those of us with some younger kids, to really, you know, use some experimentation. Try some different ways to study. What is going to be most effective for your son or, or daughter? So those are some of our tips, and now we would love to engage you guys in conversation. What are some questions you might have? Uh, what are some of the things that maybe stood out from our conversation, and how can we uh, kind of dive a little bit deeper? I think we're going to turn the slides off and get the camera back going. Hello again. Hello again. All right, so what if my child is, af is afraid to try new things because they are afraid to fail at that new thing? I think that's a great question. It's a question that, that I've been answering in my own home. I, I think and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Mm -hmm. I think having a conversation about what it means to fail is really, really important. In my estimation, failing is not trying. Failing is not setting a goal and then falling short. I'm a proponent of, right, you, you, you set your sights for the moon, and even if you don't reach it, you're still in the stars. I think doing some intentional goal setting is really, really important. And again, I think the only failure is not giving something your best shot. I agree, and I think it's also encouraging them, like, you know what, just try it. No, you know, try it. You may like to do it, and just the, that's just the point that you tried, that's an achievement. That's an achievement, because maybe it is difficult for someone to go into maybe a drama class, but you know what, go in there, check it out. Maybe you're, going for, you're just gonna be part of a group, but it's just getting involved and getting in there, and, Great for his child who does have difficulties get, you know, taking part and fearing they're going to you know, fail because you're going to show them, you know what, you tried it and it doesn't matter if you're not good at something, you tried it and that's what counts. Something that was so hard for you, you actually tried to do, that's amazing. I find that amazing. I think when I look back on my own life, the, the things that I'm most proud of are not the things that came really easily to me, but the things that I had to really work for. Um, times when I did fail times when things didn't just go really, really smoothly. Because ultimately, we're not just trying to make a great lacrosse player or a great trumpet player. We're trying to build kids with confidence, with resilience. And how do we do that? We expose them to things that they like to do. Maybe some things that, that are harder for them to do. Mm -hmm. um, 
great question. Definitely, definitely great, great food for thought. All right, next question. What if my kid doesn't want to sit at the table or desk to do homework, study, uh, to do homework and study? I, this is a softball for you. Oh, well, you know, and you and I had this discussion. So I will just say, some children and some older students, I'm going to call them high school students and younger students, they really, some of them can't just sit at a formal table or at a formal setting. If your child, you know what, some child, children may, you might have to just sit on, if it's a younger child, you may just have to sit on the floor and make an area where you're just, you know, come on, let's just get the work done and just change it up a little bit. Some students, you can't just sit at one space. You will have to change it up. So if you change it up for them, then you're going to get them to sit down and do the homework because all of a sudden you're, you're making those type of children, you're not making monotonous. So it's a different type of student you're talking about. So, you know, you could be saying, oh, come here at the kitchen. You call them into the kitchen table. Hey, come here. Let's just do your homework real quick. So you're making it that they don't even realize that you're changing it up and you're not making it like this is the homework time. Maybe next time you're, you know, you call them into your bedroom. Hey, come here. Go sit on the bed. You know what? Can I have your homework? Let's go take a look at it now. So you're still getting the homework done, but they don't feel like maybe those children, they're like, oh, no, we're doing homework right now. But this helps them to change the monotony of it because it is sometimes hard to just sit at the same place every day. Some children, like Kevin, I said before, you have to see what works best for your own child. So some kids may be that kid who I need the same desk. I need to have my things. It works for me. But some kids, you might have to be like, you know what? Let's come over here today. Let's do it over here. You know what? Let's go sit on the picnic bench and do your homework outside. So you have to figure out what works best for your child. I would also say this. I think this is going to be a good question for you to, to talk to your, your son or daughter's teacher and, and school about. Mm -hmm. Because I know that different schools have different beliefs. I know that at Hilltop, we, we believe that different kids learn differently. And what might work for Johnny uh, may not work for Susie. And so, again, we want kids to experiment. What, what are the best circumstances under which you do your homework or you study? And if it works well for Johnny and not for Susie, that's perfectly fine. I know that at some other schools, you, you do need to sit at a desk and you need to sit up straight and you need to do it my way. Um, that's not how we do it at Hilltop. And ultimately, that's one of the reasons why I love working here and, and why my kids are going to graduate from here. Great question, though. Yeah. What, what other questions do you guys have? Are there any things we should not do? Hmm. How broad are we talking about here? Don't text and drive, that's for sure. Um, I think I know where they're going with this one. I know, all right, I know everyone asks, like, I could go back to the homework. I, I did, you do, like, I know you, you want your child to have an opportunity to, because like we said here at Hilltop, the homework they, they're usually doing here is a reflection of what they did the day, that day or during the week, and we want them practicing the skill. And sometimes it could be maybe you have a child who really has a difficult time, you know, a brainstorming if it's to write, maybe they have to write a paragraph or develop a paragraph ideas. And maybe if your child is a different type of learner and gets stuck getting the thoughts out, then it is okay to go over to your child and encourage them and try to pull it out of them. You're not doing the work for them. You're kind of just giving them a little guidance and to get them going. So I think it's different. It depends on what it is, what you're what the activity is or the, you know, what type of the content there is. Because you know what, your child, some kids may go into a room and be able to read their history notes and really study for a test, but some other children might need somebody to read, to study with them. Some kids, not even a parent, they need a study buddy. They'll go with their friends and they study because if you're hearing it, you're reading it, it's a whole multi-sensory thing they're doing on their own. So it depends on your child, I think. Yeah, I think that's a great point. There's two things that I'm thinking about. One is the notion of providing incentives for your kids. And, and I know there's a lot of different kind of schools of, of thought on this. Um, I, th I think that it's dangerous territory when, when parents will, will pay their kid mm -hmm. or provide some external incentive for a kid to do homework or to get a good grade on a test, right? External versus internal motivation. I think ultimately we want our students to develop the skills where they're going to work hard because it's the right thing to do, because they need to honor their potential, not so that mom or dad gives them 10 bucks. I think that's a really important conversation for parents to have. 
The second thing I wanted to highlight was you never want to tie schoolwork or reading to, to a punishment. Oh, you were misbehaved or you didn't do your chores and so you need to read for 15 minutes because then they are going to equate schoolwork with, oh, I mean, it's, it's a bad thing. And obviously we want to foster and cultivate a love for, for lifelong learning, for curiosity. And, uh, and that's not a punishment. That's, that should be a reward. So we've been going for about 30 minutes now, unless there are any last minute questions, I, I think we'll probably wrap up. Obviously for our, our Hilltop parents who have joined in, we would love to continue this conversation on campus. For those of you who are not Hilltop parents, I think regardless of where your son or daughter is enrolled, please see Wendy and me as a resource. We'd love for you to come in. We'd love to get on the phone and to talk more about this. Not yeah. sure if you have any closing thoughts? No, I was going to say thanks for joining in. And absolutely, uh, we're here to share information. We're here to help everybody out. Good luck on having a wonderful, very successful school year. And again, please see Wendy and me and the whole team here at Hilltop as a resource for, for you and your family. All right. Thank Bye you. Bye now.